This is the reading of My Harmonic Perfection, the chapbook that was published in 1995. I am going to attempt to read through the entire thing in one sitting, being that it's shorter than a normal book. We'll see how it goes. Journey to the Interior I took you with me to the interior, with faded jeans pasted to my thirsty, suffocated skin. Your tinsel face smile flooded with sweat drops inside my left back pocket. You could quench my thirst no more than you could assuage my passion, but you always knew how to drive me deeper, testing me from behind your stained glass citadel, that picture of you in my pocket. We agreed, me for the thrill, and you for the life, to enter the descending cavern and proceed downward to the ebonite edge, the self absorbed by ethers searching for the hidden torch of Mount Olympus. I expected you to know by now how to resist the core's festering heat, but I was wrong. You laminated yourself almost immediately inside my protective shell, stuck and dying. You rotten weight. You paper icon. Why must I always be the strong one? Why must I always carry you back to where you are safe from yourself? After the journey. Back outside, your picture perfect. Your face flat on the kitchen table, nestled between Grandma's teapot cozy and a vase of fresh-cut daffodils, two lactating breasts. I stare at you, staring at the ceiling, so distant and safe, so clearly revitalized, like this morning's drinking box that was yesterday's paper. What will you tell me, now that you're safe again? Now that you are home, your four-poster bed neatly dressed and awaiting your next bow-tie dream. Perhaps you'll say I let you down. I did not believe that a longer wait would have revealed your ability to change with the climate. Or that you changed your mind. You no longer believe the interior holds the only license on life. I notice the sunlight is beginning to fade you now, and I'm sad for you. That you must live inside your dark shoebox, that loyal coffin. I must put you away for now, until you can face the fire burning at the interior. Fantasy Lover Fantasy Lover Cloud Walker, a light on me tonight. Envelop me with passion sweet, transmitting restless flight. Fantasy lovers speak to me with words of endless love and dislodge prosaic clutter. It's you I'm dreaming of. Cloud walker, take me high to realms allayed and calm. Transport me to your dream world, preserved in faultless time. Fantasy lover, Cloudwalker. Dreams are hard to feel. If only you had substance, enough to make you real. Dance of One Alone in the night, I lay dreaming. We're dancing me silhouette moon, and I look in your eyes as you shed your disguise midst the scattering of each twilight hue. Your hands touch my back, air so softly. My heart shivs in your sweet embrace, and I reach for your name as you smile once again, with emotions no word can replace. In the eve, our lives vary in meaning. True expressions of love are unplanned, and the mind can't reprove what the spirit makes move in the heart of a woman and man. We step to the tune of our passion, unaware of a present or past, and we merge into one 
as the magic is done, causing each sacred moment to last. We waltz in the Garden of Eden, respecting our danger of need, and I flow back into you, reuniting the two. With fervor for life, I'm received. Alone in the night, we incarnate, manifesting the truth we both know. We were woman and man when the world first began the dance of one eternal soul. Your Crow Your crow is your symbol of power, beautiful, black. Feathered arms fanned out, then folded in on his aerial hydropole perch. His backdrop is nestled in tender blue sky, yet before him lies the chaotic rush of civilized man. He remains untouched as he controls his world. You say he talks to you, and I believe you. Through him you merge with yourself, preening the down of your spirit, and you require not, nor give, dubious explanation. Trust in the crow, then, I say, for if he will not consent to be your juror, then neither shall I. I have felt the air current tumble from your wings. I have seen you fly, and I have carried you upon centaurian shoulders, while my bow stayed in its cradle. Into the corridor. I hear the echoes of your footsteps passing through the corridors in a metronomic lullaby. You are a dull, semi-nonbulistic rhythm that whispers to me on waves that reek of cabbage rot. I am furtive, pensive, and fertile in my concupiscence, beckoning to you against my better judgment, but I know you will never respond, because you've proven your lack of physical substance. I hear the echoes of the day you made yourself my legend, and now you cannot be more than a ghost. Time for you. I will give you your time, because I've seen the periods and commas inscribed in your request. They are your sons, dying and being born every twenty-four hours, boned skeletal fingers that rush through your tresses to keep them in line. I will allow you your locks with keys for protection, and your case of Mitchum, the roll-on that soothes with promises of love and social acceptance. I would not deny you such illusions of natural progression, the manner with which you feed your existential needs? Your time is my anguish and pain, my laughter and reflections. It is that which I feel, sense, fold, and overlap in the mixing bowl of my mind. This is where I blend conscious thought with the unconscious. Where days become nights become days, and hours are minutes. Our hours. This is the cool edge of my mind's glacial existence, and in this place, nothing is everything, and everything, nothing. If you take your time, you will lose it, but let go of time, and you will receive it. So it is possible that I may never have you, but you will always be with me, because the metaphysical is physical. And love is hate, is love. Prince of Love Prince of Love, the thought of you brings swelling to my breast. My dreams grow bright and shadows dark. You're so unlike the rest. You never seen the same man twice, the strange light in your eyes reflects an untamed womanhood that's rushing between my thighs. Your soft breeze wisps across my neck. 
your gentle hand, that silver glove. Summon spirits racing wild inside me, Prince of Love. Oh, Prince of Love, I'll come to you. When morn is upon the grass, when moonlight winks, when trees bow deep, my winged heels are fast to feel you coursing through my veins, to brace your shimmering wand, to have that magic passion that always draws me on, Prince of Love. <clears throat> Don't ask. Don't ask me for a poem. I will tell you there's no magic in it. It is muttering of thoughts. Thoughts so mature they somehow died before ever being born upon the page. Don't ask me what I'd write in honor of nostalgic memories. I will tell you it is lost verse. Words lost in the regrets of broken soldiers. Like them, I cannot remember the names of those I sacrificed, and why would I want to? Honor and glory are surrendered by time. There's no magic in what haunts you. Don't ask me why our treaty failed. I must tell you nothing while the sides remain unclear. And don't ask me to say I love you. Because I will tell you, there's no honor in it. Too many wars are fought. Too many gifts and obligations confused. Too many casualties. You should know by now the value of unfought wars and love that denies expression. This is where there is magic. The turntable. Here, in this room, the walls are padded. You and I stand acknowledging our obtuse kinship to the revolutionary turntable, finally come full circle. Why does it play that song, our song, that echoes, 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 stuck on the last line we ever heard? The dauntless needle aims to travel beyond the confines of a scratched groove. It screams and screeches and pleads with us for release. Perhaps a smoother playing melody? But our hands are paralyzed, chained to empty pockets, our ears fixed one to the other's breathing. Here, in this feeble cell, we are face to face with ourselves and the needle of our own emotions. Like a rock. I'd rather love like a rock than ever like a rose. For when the winds of winter come, the flower quickly goes. A flower's beauty doesn't last. It blossoms, and then it dies. But the beauty of a rock, though crude, is always before your eyes. The rose means love, and yet its thorns warn all who venture near. But a rock is smooth, it has no grudge, and it has no need to fear. Security, that's its motto. A rock is hard to break. Unlike the fragile flower, its love is never fake. It has no pretty fragrance, and it holds no fine detail. But a rock is how I wish to love. A rock is never frail.